Hello viewers, this is Too Fast here. In today's video, I'll show you how I installed an amplifier and subwoofer in my Nissan Pathfinder while maintaining the factory radio system. Now I will show you every step involved in the installation. Now depending on how long the video is going to be, I might make it a two-part or three-part video. But make sure you watch the entire video as I will show you what's involved. With this install, I'll need to install an amplifier in the vehicle. And the amplifier will require a dedicated power cable running from the car battery into the vehicle and directly connecting to the amplifier. That power cable will also need an inline fuse to protect it from any short circuits. And I'm thinking of removing this nut right here, make a small bracket, and then mount the inline fuse right in this location. So the wire will come from the battery post right here to the inline fuse, and then out from the inline fuse through the firewall. Here I'm prepping the power wire that will connect to the battery. By the way, this power wire is 8 gauge and the length I'm running from the battery to the back is 14 feet, which can handle up to 40 amps. I soldered a ring terminal to the wire and this will connect to the car battery. Cover the terminal with heat shrink. Cut a piece of wire loom and wrap it over the wire. Connect the wire to one side of the fuse holder. Finish it off by covering the loom with a piece of heat shrink. Now connect the ring terminal to one of the bolt on the positive battery terminal. and reinstall the battery terminal cover. Now the hardest part of this install is actually finding an access hole for you to run the power cable from the engine bay into the vehicle. On this Nissan Pathfinder, there are no additional grommets you can use to pass a wire. Now some people ran the cable by cutting the grommet on the big wiring harness on the driver's side. But even with that, it's very difficult to get to because that wiring harness is buried way behind the strut tower. And from inside the vehicle, the access is very tight. So what I've decided to do is drill my own access hole through the firewall. I found an area to the left of the brake booster where there's an open area. And you can drill an access hole to pass a wire through it. Let me bring the camera closer so you can see where I drilled the access hole. Now right here at the back, that's a brake booster. If you follow this wire loom all the way to the back, right there is where I drilled the access hole is about three inches to the left of the brake booster. Now I should let you know drilling the access hole took a lot of time because it's not only one sheet metal, it's actually two sheet metal sandwiched with sound deadening material in the middle. So you need a long drill bit and a big enough size so you can run the heavy gauge wire. After I drilled it, I installed a rubber grommet so I can pass the wire without the metal cutting into the wire. Now I'll run the power cable into the vehicle. I made a bracket for mounting the fuse holder onto the vehicle and this bracket will be bolted onto a stud that's located right here. With the bracket installed, now I can install the fuse holder onto the bracket. And on this side, you can see where I installed the rubber grommet right here and that'll help prevent the sheet metal cutting into the wire. Carefully route the wire behind the driver's side kick panel. Follow the factory wiring harness and run this power cable all the way to the back hatch. Now for this install, I'll be using the high level speaker output to feed the audio signal into the amplifier. This Nissan Pathfinder comes with a Bose system and the Bose amplifier is located underneath the third row seat right here. So I'll need to remove the third row seat to access the wiring harness on the Bose amplifier. Now it might seem like a lot of work, but that's necessary because there's also a remote turn on wire that I'll be tapping onto 
So it'll automatically turn on my amplifier when the radio turns on. Remove this plastic cover. And here's a factory Bose subwoofer. Go ahead and remove this. Disconnect the connector at the bottom. Now pull up on this trim piece. In the storage bin, there are three 10 millimeter screws you need to remove. One, two, and three. Release the four clips here. I'm also gonna remove the cover for the jack. Now pull up on the storage bin to remove it. Now before you remove the storage bin, you can either remove the lid by removing the four Phillips screws right here, or pry up on the carpeting here to separate the back carpeting from the lid. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the lid. Now you can remove the storage bin now there are some clips underneath. Go ahead and lift it up. Now you need to remove six bolts on the back of the seat. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. These bolts are 14 millimeter. Now go inside the vehicle and remove the cover right here. There are two of them, one on each side. And behind it are two 14 millimeter bolts you need to remove. To remove the cover, push the seat bottom back and then lift this cover up. Do the same thing for the other one. Now I don't need to take the third row seat out, but I want to lift up the back side of the seat and tilt it forward. To make it a little easier, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two 14 millimeter bolts which removes this bracket here. Now you can lift up the back side of the seat and tilt it forward. And here's the amp. Here you see I place a couple of pieces of wood here to hold the seat up. While I'm showing you this, if your Nissan Pathfinder does not have a Bose system, then you're not gonna have this amplifier right here. And this space is empty. If that's the case, to get the speaker level signal, you can try tapping the speaker wire on the rear door speakers. Also, if you don't have this amp, you can see underneath the third row seat is a lot of space. Some people have actually installed an amp and a low profile subwoofer box underneath this space. Now to get access to all the wires, I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt this amp and it's held in by four 10 millimeter bolts. Now on the back of the amp, there are two connectors. On this connector, this white wire that I'm testing is a remote turn on wire. I just turn on the radio. On the multimeter, you can see I'm getting 11 volt. And when I turn off the radio, it'll go to zero. So that's what I'll use to turn on my amplifier. Here I tap the wire onto the remote wire and I'm soldering the connection. I'll run this wire to the amplifier. Now on this other connector, this pair of wire, the black and the white wire, this is a speaker output for woofer number one. Next to it over here 
this green and white pair, this is woofer number two. So these two pair of wires will have the high level output to the subwoofer. Now I don't have to tap it here because I can also tap onto the wiring harness that connects to the subwoofer box. Here's a connector that connects to the Bose subwoofer. These are the wires going to this connector. As you can see, each pair is twisted and the white wire you see here is positive and the green is negative. Same as on the other one, the white is positive and the black is negative. Here I soldered my wire and tapped onto the speaker output to the subwoofer. Now I just need to tape it up. I also need to connect a ground wire. And if you look back here, there's a grounding bolt. I'm gonna remove that and then connect my ground wire. Here's a look at the chassis ground I installed. Here are all the wires you need to install an aftermarket amplifier and subwoofer. The speaker output wire, remote wire, car battery wire, and chassis ground. I've gone ahead and reinstalled all the bolts holding down the third row seat. Now I reinstalled the storage bin. I brought the wire out through this hole right here. With all the wires ran, I'll end the video right here. In the next video, I'll show you how I built the mounting panel for the amplifier and the lighted LED amplifier beauty cover. I'll also show you the subwoofer box and get everything installed. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for part two of this install. Thank you for watching this video. To support this channel, remember to click on thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so you get notified of new videos.